Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Caroline Woods. It's time for the big three, three stocks, three charts, three trades. Kevin Green is here to take us through the charts. And here to take us through the trades is Don Kaufman, co-founder of Theo Trade. Kevin and Don, thanks so much for joining me. Don, we'll start with you. Before we get to your first trade, I'm just curious about your overall take on this market, seeing green once again, uh, you know, not even necessarily in that Santa Claus rally period just yet, but it seems like there's a lot of bullishness about Santa Claus kind of coming to town. What do you think? I think uh, Santa Claus has already come and gone. I mean, look at this marketplace. You're uh, up substantially in post-election. And one of the things that we're seeing right now that uh, I think a lot of investors and traders should really take notice, look at some of the sell-side activity that you're seeing inside of the financials, which really led a lot of the rally in November. Look at some of the sell-side activity specifically inside of the energy sector, also right on the forefront of what was buying inside of November. So the market has started to roll over. Right now, all we're seeing is what I term kind of the monsters of tech that are kind of leading the pack right now, but it's, it's really low volume out there as well in the uh, in the last two trading sessions. So a uh, little concern right now uh, as to how far much, uh, you know, much further up we can actually move. Womp, womp. So basically you're the Grinch, but uh, before, before we do get to Alibaba, I know it's your first trade. So if Santa Claus has come and gone, what the, could that look like in terms of uh, a potential pullback? Are you expecting something big here? Yeah, look, you know, there's so many traders and so many investors that are like, look, it's it's over. You know, we're going into the clubhouse because the S&Ps are up some 28 percent on a year to date basis. But you still have the better part of uh, the next three weeks to really trade actively into the end of this year. We've got a tremendous amount of news that's going to be coming out. Uh, and again, I would be uh, on your game. Some volatility could definitely hit this marketplace in the next three weeks. All right. Well, we'll be looking for it. But uh, let's talk about what you're trading right now. And first up is Alibaba. Uh, you it sounds like a, a bullish trade for Alibaba, which is lower today, uh, only up about nine percent year to date. Tell us about this trade. Yeah, so uh, I am ever the contrarian. And I got to tell you, I think, first of all, Alibaba has really been caught up, if you will, in some of the sell side activity in just Chinese large caps. So it's not necessarily that, uh, you know, Baba in sales and so forth are, uh, are terrible moving forward. And the fundamentals have actually decreased, which they have mildly. But I think Baba still has some uh, some decent upside opportunity here. Again, it's an extreme oversold condition. The other aspect that really comes into play here is the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar has been ripping, just ripping higher. So if the U.S. dollar is to pull back at all, which it kind of looks like it maybe has started to do that, I think you could actually get a pop out of, again, uh, BABA and some of the Chinese large caps over there. As I said, this is just a stock that got caught up in uh, overall the emerging market uh, sell-off. As such, I'm going to go out to the Jan 17th expiration on this one. Buy the 90 call, sell the 95 call. This trade is done for a dollar 15 debit, so it's just a five dollar wide spread, dollar 15 debit. Uh, nice bullish shot though, but giving myself a little bit of time, 44 days to actually let this one play. All right, so Kevin, switching over to you. Don threw cold water on the Santa Claus rally, but likes Alibaba despite the fact that it's been a pretty rough chart just uh, since October. Uh, walk us through what stands out to you in terms of technicals for Alibaba. Yeah, I think uh, Don's looking at the risk reward ratio when it comes to the stock. Now, obviously, it's actually done. Uh, if you're looking at the one year daily chart, there's some constructive uh, tendencies for this chart, to say the least. If you start off uh, earlier uh, this year, you actually saw a nice little consolidation uptrade or this ascending channel uh, that was very well respected before that breakout period. And that breakout was also coinciding with the, the stimulus measures from China and all of this uh, activity of short covering and, and options activity, right? And we started seeing the, ga uh, the stock gap up. And those gaps uh, eventually were filled after the stock hit around $117. And it's been moving to the downside ever since. Just kind of notice, though, that 20-day moving average, which is in blue is something that the stock really does respect. So now that it has flipped from support on the way up to now resistance. So that's going to be your first area uh, that you want to be able to uh, you know break out of if you are a bull in this name. We're pretty much uh, touching the 200 day moving average. We touched it briefly, saw a little bit of a bounce. Seems like we're going to go back and retest it here in the near term. But we're right back in that channel line that we saw earlier this year. You're taking all the hype out of it. Uh, we're still kind of trying to have some stock appreciation. And the other thing too is the RSI, which is in a bearish uh, 
formation here. We would have made low, lower lows as well as lower highs, uh, but you are getting a small little bounce here. So there might be a little bit of an optimism, some optimism here that we make a higher low over the next couple of trading sessions. And if that's going to be the case, uh, that could also give bulls maybe some confidence that this stock could actually rise to the upside. And MACD is trying to cross still in a very uh, bearish uh, formation when you're looking at uh, the direction uh, relative to the zero line here, but you are seeing a potentially a cross that's occurring here today for the 12 VMAs above the 26. So once again, risk reward, uh, you can make a case for, for Don's uh, bullish thesis here. Uh, and, and, and we've seen the reaction and enthusiasm in the past uh, for the stock. And, and that could actually happen uh, here in the future over the next you know, 30 days or so. Okay, not seeing that upside today. Shares down about one and a half percent. Don, let's move to your next trade. That's Walt Disney. Uh, very different chart for Walt Disney than Alibaba, but uh, doesn't sound like uh, you're upbeat on this one. Tell us about this bearish trade. Yeah, so here's one that's actually been uh, ripping to the upside, and I'm actually taking the opposing side of this as well. So we could also say possibly risk rewards. So I think he's spot on with uh, with that in the previous trade. So the risk reward here inside of Disney. One of the first things is you've got to get through in Disney is the 120 level. And I'm gonna tell you that 120 level is uh, is fierce over the last couple of years inside of Disney. What I'm actually looking for is a pullback in Disney uh, back down just below the gap higher in the last earnings uh, period. So a pullback in Disney in and around all the way back to the, uh, to the 100 mark. As such, I'm actually going to build a, a bearish put spread in here. Again, a bearish put spread, possibly Disney rolling over, but I'm gonna give myself ample time. So I'm going out in Disney to the February 21st expiration. Again, Feb 21, I'm gonna be buying a 110 put. Again, buying a 110 put, selling the 100 puts. This trade is done for a dollar 75 debit. It has got wonderful risk reward. And uh, again, we're not asking for a uh, for a massive pullback. Just in the last few weeks, we've seen the uh, the price appreciation in Disney be rather massive. Again, a gap higher on the earnings. Just looking for us to kind of fill the gap to the downside and uh, kind of expose Disney back to the uh, the 100 level. Okay. All right. So, Kevin, when you take a look at the Disney chart, uh, what stands out to you from a technical standpoint, especially how uh, 100 and 120 play into it? You know, I, once again, I can see where he's getting uh, maybe some of his, uh, of his optimism here if we do see a fade. If you kind of look at the chart back earlier uh, this year, back in around February, we had this island top type of pattern that took place. We had a gap to the upside after earnings, and then we had this head and shoulders pattern, but it was pretty much on its own until we actually had a negative earnings announcement and we saw this pull to the downside here. We saw some consolidation between that $85 level and the $90 level until we broke out, came back, retested that uh, upper end of that channel at point B, and then we kind of moved to the upside, tested that 200 day, and then broke out to the upside here but now we're testing these levels again that island top and you can actually make the case here that the rsi once again kind of in a bearish actually five, uh, formation you're looking at a, a little bit of a bearish divergence overextended when it comes to the price action and you're looking at that to try to resolve itself right now the secondary trend for rsi is bearish the primary trend is bullish so we're going to see that apex over the next couple of weeks and we'll test to see how, how strong this price action is going to be and then you also have that 200 day moving average that could be an area of support too which is exactly where uh, Don is actually talking about that 102 level. I would say first and foremost, you got to hit the 20 day moving average. That seems a little bit more reasonable for a pullback for right now. And then the last thing is that MACD cross. Uh, the 12 EMA is about to cross below the 26 EMA. It's really overextended here. And if you kind of go back in the past and you see those MACD crosses when we have seen prices advancing, it's been a really good, reliable indicator that we will see a pullback or potentially we'll see a pullback here. So. Uh, Understandable why he has that that bearish thesis. I'm not sure if it's going to get down on $100 or 102, but you can make a case that that 20 period moving average uh, could be in the crosshairs here over the next couple of weeks. All right, so optimism for a fade, aren't we? Just all doom and gloom here. All right, Don, ever the contrarian in your final trade is Nvidia. Are you uh, one of the the lone people betting against Nvidia? Walk us through this trade. Yeah, it's time. It's time. So I've actually taken some shots in NVIDIA, you know, over the last few months uh, to actually look for uh, for the stock, both higher and lower. But uh, but right now, for the first time in a very long time, I think we actually could actually fade, if you will, in NVIDIA or not necessarily be so bullish. So the first thing I'm going to say is that I'm going to be selling a very slightly out of the money call spread here. Is it an outright, you know, bearish trade? 
Yeah, as long as the stock does not continue to appreciate to the upside, this trade could be profitable. But I think uh, NVIDIA, for the first time in a long time, is going to be facing some competition, specifically from Amazon. Obviously, we've heard about the deal where uh, Amazon has actually uh, been signed on by Anthropic to actually build, again, one of the uh, largest AI clusters uh, out there in a supercomputer. Uh, and that's business, again, that NVIDIA is not going to have. I think the entire industry is looking that way right now, although we still see some price appreciation inside of NVIDIA, I think it's going to be rather muted. As such, I'm just going out to the Gen 17 expiration. Again, I'm going to be selling the call spread, and that is going to be selling the 145 calls, buying the 150 calls. Again, selling the 145 calls, buying the 150 calls. This one's done for about a $2 credit. So I bring a credit in, anything below 145, and we're golden in this particular trade, but that's actually the key right now is to actually slow, if you will, some of the momentum that we've actually seen in NVIDIA in the last, uh, the last couple of weeks. Okay, all right. So Kevin, you've been very agreeable up to this point. Uh, what about when you take a look at technical levels for NVIDIA? Do you, do you share the same sentiment? Do you see where Don's coming from? I see where Don's coming from. It's a very hard stock to, to fade, though. So let me hedge my bets here uh, when it comes to the technicals, because once again, you do have a, a lot of this enthusiasm when it comes to artificial intelligence. And NVIDIA has been utilized as a flight to safety type of trade here if we do see some volatility in the broader market. But the reason why I will say that he may have a, a point here is that we actually have some uh, divergences actually taking place for the RSI. We'll start at point A. Point A, we saw this uh, divergence uh, on the RSI where it's making a lower high and making lower lows, but the price for the most part was actually kind of staying stagnant. We usually have a double top pattern and then we see a pullback. So those purple lines are kind of associating with the RSI divergence. And then when we actually see a flush, we can see that back in February of this year, we had the same type of scenario taking place in uh, late June. And then we started seeing the flush basically in the middle of July. And right now we actually still have that same type of divergence. If you kind of look at uh, the uh, around October 17th, RSI has been actually making lower highs on a relative basis and making lower lows. But if you look at the price action, it's been able to, for the most part, hold up. Now you can have a consolidation in time or you can have a consolidation in price. You gotta kind of pick your poison there. But if we do see the same type of trend like the previous two over this year, you would expect maybe a pullback in the name. And if we do see a pullback, uh, the first area of support is gonna be $130. Uh, the next one that you're gonna be looking at is around $117. That's fairly aggressive, uh, but once again, the divergences usually resolve themselves one way or another. Now, if you're a bull, you have that MACD actually kind of uh, curving to the upside here, trying to hinge a little bit higher. So that kind of gives you a little bit of conflicting data sets. And you also have that bullish uh, ascending channel that's taking place right now. So respect the channel for now. 150 could be an area of resistance. A lot of options activity sitting there. But I understand the reason and, and, and his thought process when it comes to potentially a, a fade. Uh, but if it does happen, Caroline, these fades are generally fairly quick and you do see some buyers actually stepping in aggressively so you probably got to be tactical if you are trying to short the name yeah it seems like anyone says uh, so many people that we talk to say uh, buy any dips on nvidia i was taking a look 91 percent of analysts have a buy rating on it still despite this impressive run higher and uh, median price target 12 months but 175 so uh, just throwing that out there don i know that these are trades so uh, just want to give you final thoughts don you, you talked about some potential volatility over the next few weeks heading into year end that santa claus has come and gone but when you think about 2025 uh, where do you see this market going yeah, the first thing I want to address there is 91% of analysts. When you have that many analysts on one side of a particular trade, I'll take the other side all day long over there. Into 2025, one of the first things that you want to look for, again, is, is volatility actually picking up. That's one of the concerns. I mean, one of the things that people have really pushed aside, I recognize there's a new administration coming in, but we could be looking at spending cuts, federal government spending cuts amounting to what 1.5 maybe 2 trillion dollars i mean that's that's ultimately what uh, you know elon and vivek are actually looking at right now and i don't think that markets are actually pricing that in at this point in time it's a huge consideration moving forward uh, we're talking trillions of dollars of cuts and that is literally bottom line into the gdp uh, look for volatility to uh, to really pick up when we start hearing more about some of the uh, cost cutting Okay, we'll leave it there. Don Kaufman, Theo Trade, and Kevin Green, thank you both so much.